Now, right, I'm back. We got some anger, and this is an Oktoberfest Martzen, and um, it says authentic Bavarian festival lager. Um, this is one of the big dogs over there in Germany. Uh, beer coming in at 5.8 ABV. That's about right. A lot of them are pushing 6%. Uh, let's see what we got on the back. Uh, Anga, uh, around since 1878. Amber colored, rich, and full bodied Anga at the foot of the Bavarian Alps is one of the world's most respected breweries, family owned and operated since 1878. And then there is some additional information there, but uh, that is for y'all to digest fairly simplistic uh, bottle and labeling. We're going to go ahead and use the rare opportunity to use our Lancaster Razor Works bottle opener right here. This is pine cone cast in pearl white resin. That was a gift from Andre over at Lancaster Razor Works. Very beautiful uh, bottle opener indeed. And let's go ahead and just capture this detail. We got a small uh, village or whatever on the cap. So let's crack it, set that to the side. We'll put the bottle opener right by our brush display. Don't say I have a problem. I can quit whenever I want. <laughs> let's go ahead and pour this bad boy into our Goat Fest mug um, that we got from Varietal Beer Company. Goat Fest is a uh, festival where they celebrate my box. Totally different than this. Well, not not so different, but different than this. Oktoberfest, Martzen. One of my favorite styles to enjoy, especially this time of year. But uh, if I ever see one out of season year round, I definitely take the time to enjoy them. So definitely a uh, deep amber color here. And uh, I'm sure it's going to uh, match a lot of the... Uh, Caramelly color is probably going to match some of the flavors. Let's go ahead and nose it. Definitely bready. A little bit spicy, actually, but low spice. Um, but you could definitely get a lot of that malt sweetness coming through. Let's uh, take a swig here. Oh, yeah. Definitely got a bit of that sweetness. This one actually has like a little bit of a yeast character coming across on the palate. I don't want to say like um, a banana, but it's not far off. Um, but it's mellow. Other than that, definitely some good breadiness to it. No real roast. Kind of clean on the finish. Drinks well for its ABV. Just a beautiful, beautiful beer. Perfect since it is October and Oktoberfest is kind of coming to a close. All right, <clears throat> where's that damn thing at? Another sample from Brian over at the Wet Shave Experience that he sent to me. Thank you, Brian, I appreciate you. This one is Crown and Crane Animalia. And this is a little half ounce sample jar. I went ahead and threw the whole half ounce into my Lancaster Razor Works shave bowl, beautiful shave bowl, staple of my daily shaves. Um, got the lather already whipped up here. So I got gobs of lather, you can kind of see there, gobs of lather in the shave bowl. Um, when I'm using a sample, especially a sample from a brand I've never used before, uh, in this case, I've never used Crown and Crane. This will be my first run with it. Um, I, I tend to load heavy, so I threw the whole damn sample in there. No reason to be frugal with soap when you're trying to have your first impressions. Um, this here is our Moon Soaps made by Kent Designs Shave Brush. This one was called the Leaf Lads Brush, and it was kind of a group order where we got this... Um, cigar design 
or cigar color design with like a cigar band. And then on top we got the AP Shave Co. Uh, cashmere Synthetic Knot with a good looking lather loaded in there. Um, let's see. Today we're going to be using this beauty. This is the Gem G Bar. Um, kind of a little different look than most other gems. You can see the top cap and whatnot is about the same. The height and stature is about the same. But the handle design is um, kind of retro futuristic, if that makes sense. What they thought the future would look like back in the day. Their vision of the future. Very uh, cool little razor, though. There we go. So, in order to open the cap, it has this tab in the back. You just press down, opens the cap. You can see it says uh, Gem Razor there. Made in the USA up in the shadows. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these Persona stainless blades that I still have in the packaging, um, but I have used before. Let's go ahead and uh, show that for anybody that's interested. I'll go ahead and slip out my little tuck of blades. All you got to do is push to the side, comes out this end, and it has a uh, built in blade bank on the bottom. So then from there the smart thing is to grab it on either end of the blade and then you have your razor here. You just kind of uh, tuck the blade back into the back and then we'll go ahead and put it where it can use some gravity there. Um, but it has blade stops on either end and so the blade will get held in place. You just gotta make sure it is somewhat centered and then push up to flip the cap down we have one more look looks like we're still on the blade stops pretty center and that is going to be held snug in place as we shave today let's go ahead and get some water on the face and get right into this shave slash first impressions i wanted to use a uh, gem razor today because i saw a little excerpt from a leather talk with um, John from Lather Hog and HD Crossbones was the guest and they were talking about um, gem razors and uh, I'll mention both of those channels in the description of the video please check them out they're both really good dudes they both have uh, nice YouTube channels where they're very precise with giving you good uh, information about their products a uh, lot better than me on that front but um, kind of a no-nonsense really um, really informational channels and, and I and I enjoy them both <clears throat> so please go check out those fellas um, so this soap I checked it out online it's a uh, $17.95 for a five ounce a tub or jar of vegan shave soap. They also offer tallow, but they have different releases for their vegan releases and tallow releases. So sometimes you might have to uh, bite the bullet if you're a tallow lover or if you're a vegan lover. Certain releases might not be available to you at all times just because some are for in the vegan base and some are in the tallow base. This particular one is a vegan shave soap. So $17.95 for five ounces. That is a pretty good value in my opinion. Hopefully the soap, the soap shaves well. And um, yeah, hopefully this, it, it you know hits all the marks and I can give it a thumbs up review. Uh, I did like that they also offered a $9.50 3 ounce refill puck and they also offered, this is directly from Crown & Crane, uh, their website. So I just googled Crown & Crane shaving soap, came right up. Um, but they also offer a 1 ounce sample um, of shave soap for $3.75. So I don't know. It doesn't sound like that scales appropriately, 
but if you really want to try before you invest in a full tub, you definitely can because um, they offer it. So let's go ahead and get right into the shave with the beautiful Gem G bar. The uh, the scent on this one. They they mention it is inspired by um, a scent. They mention that it's not a dupe, but it's inspired by a scent, and they give a hint to what that scent is, but they don't come out and say it. They don't come right out and say this is what it's inspired by, or this is what we, you know, set out to make. Uh, but they said um, the hint to the inspiration of this scent is a well-known hotel in Florida. And then I'm sure the name Animalia probably is also a little bit of a hint, I would guess. I didn't take the uh, time to really research what the hell the inspiration could have been um, but I am happy to report it's a nice scent it does smell kind of like a a warm slightly spicy uh, cologne type scent not so spicy that it's unapproachable. I think it's uh, well blended. It smells pretty great. Um, they classify it as a unisex. Now I do think it is slightly mature so the scent itself kind of gives off um, more mature vibes like a uh, slightly older gentleman than me. I'm 30. I think somebody maybe in their 40s, 50s 60s this would you know hit a lot closer to home for them, but I still enjoy it. I still can uh, Appreciate it Sorry if you hear a lot of uh, like bouncing and knocking my puppy is playing with her toy um, Right beside me She knows how to How to be a good distraction for me and this, the soap, um, uh, it was easy to lather up. I loaded heavy and it took a bunch of water. I did notice it kind of got voluminous kind of quickly. So I would say this is a little bit on the higher structure side, but um, it maintained like a nice medium uh, density the whole time. Even after multiple additions of water, it maintained a nice density and it didn't really break down. So that is a good sign. At the point where I decided it looked good for shaving, I probably could have got away with um, adding more water to it, just being honest. But seeing as this is the only crown and crane I have in my den this sample was it if I uh, if I drowned it out my lather by over hydrating it I wouldn't be able to revive it <laughs> with more crown and crane so I decided not to push my luck and just shave with it where it was and it, it's doing great let's go ahead and take a sip here and we'll get back to the scent notes All right, scent notes, vanilla, tonka, white tea, saffron, sandalwood, and tobacco leaf. And uh, they kind of described them as the sweetness came from the vanilla tonka, um, some spice and kind of um, exotic notes came from the white tea and saffron, and then more of a, um, a nice... Uh, warm base uh, sandalwood 
and tobacco leaf. <clears throat> the way it comes across to me, like I was, uh, like I was saying, I'm actually, no, I'll leave it as is. I was going to say I'm going to add more water, but really it looks pretty good. I think it kind of has like a, uh, like a matte white, slight semi-gloss shine to it. Not the, not the shiniest shave soap I've ever seen, but it definitely still looks good to me. I know I kind of prefer mine on the drier side, so you can see it's ever so slightly streaky. I do believe if I added more water, it would take it and not break down. I have heard good things from other reviews with Crown and Crane. But I just have gobs of leather here. Um, so the scent to me, it does smell familiar, which I find with a lot of scents that smell mature. It's almost like, it's almost like there's somewhere deep in my memory, but, uh, that's not always the case. But this one, it also kind of smells familiar, like somehow nostalgic. Um... I definitely, it's about a, a six on the scent strength. I think it's pretty well bold and banging. I'm always catching little whiffs. Um, to me, I feel like there's a nice mix between like the vanilla tonka and sandalwood. I'm really getting like that almost at all times. And then it mentions tobacco leaf oops I'm going with the grain in it mentions tobacco leaf which I usually attribute to like a well aged cigar tobacco not sweet tobacco that is commonly used in in um, fragrance all types of fragrance no nay spicy earthy tobacco that's usually what comes to mind when they say tobacco leaf rather than just tobacco and definitely not tobacco flower so I think it adds a bit of like a spicy earthy element that I also pick up from time to time. And when I pick it up, I think that's when this scent shines the most. I definitely feel like the white tea and saffron are just kind of dancing on the top, a little bit more mellow, a little bit um, less perceivable in the grand scheme of things, but I'm sure they're rounding it out and making it a more complete scent as a whole. Um, I really enjoy this one. The aftershave that I'm pairing it with today is the uh, collaboration between Strike Gold Shave and a uh, first line shave called Washington. And I do feel like they are complementary. Uh, they both have uh, kind of a warm base they both feature that tobacco leaf excuse me and um so i do feel like they're complementary this one might be a little bit mellower of a of an experience more approachable perhaps that one that one's a little bit more uh robust and if you know i gave it to a a hundred people I think I think you would have more people liking this one just because more people like basic bitch scents and I, I'm not trying to say that in a in a negative way but I think this one has more of a crowd pleasing quality to it and the strike gold shave first line shave collab is more complex and a lot of times complex scents scare away the basic bitches so, this one here, I definitely feel like 
is a bit of a crowd pleaser. Maybe not entirely because of it does have a little bit of spiciness to it. But it's definitely approachable, I think. And unisex, they say. I could see it, but again, probably with a cougar, a sugar mama, a lady that's a little bit more mature. All right. So I know we didn't talk too much about the gem razor, but as you could see, I was on cruise control and I got a flawless, flawless BBS shave. <clears throat> I could tell that was ever so slightly underhydrated towards the end there. It wasn't uh, washing out of the lather channels that well. But nonetheless, it had all the slickness I needed. It was a really good first run with a Crown and Crane product. I definitely look forward to uh, picking up some Crown and Crane in the future. I wouldn't be opposed to picking up this scent, actually. I would spend my money on Animalia. Um, I was going to throw the giveaway results in this video, and I still might. Or I might just do it as a separate video. Um, since this one is gonna go a hair long for my usual target of 20 minutes that I almost never hit <laughs> um, but yeah crown and crane vegan base very enjoyable I like that they had a refill puck option I like that they had a sample option uh, samples make sales artisan so definitely if you're not offering samples, please consider it. The community loves them. I know artisans hate them, but samples make sales, I'm telling you. <clears throat> this, uh, this sample that was given to me by another community member is going to lead to a possible sale. If not this one, uh, maybe something else. Alright, Lancaster Razorworks. Uh, shave towel here, black sheep towel. Always a luxurious way to uh, clean off after a nice shave. Gem razors are fantastic little safety razors um, from the past. They're usually cheap. You can get them on eBay or Etsy. Sometimes new old stock. Sometimes used, but Either way, as long as they're functional, they'll give you a good shave. And I know a lot of people like using the PTFE cloated blades, and a lot say that that's the only way to use a gem. But I just used a stainless steel blade, no coating, did just fine. Um, and the subsequent shaves on it are going to feel even better, I guarantee it. Because uh, that first one is usually a little bit scary sharp. But the G-Bar is a kind of medium mild razor, so it doesn't really scare me off. Let's uh, get some of this aftershave splash. This is going to be kind of like a, a more robust, complex uh, complement to Animalia here. And um, this one right here, Washington, is actually a uh, in the hot spot in my contender for best scent of 2022 that I have tried thus far. Um, so if it tells you anything that I love Washington this much, it should also tell you how much I enjoyed Animalia as well. All right, that'll do it for me. Another long ass video. I'll probably put the giveaway winnings on a separate small video, but uh, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I have my TRC affiliate link in the description below. I have my Murphy and McNeil affiliate link in the description below. Use them if you want to. I do get a kickback from both of those if you make purchases using them. And that helps the channel. That helps me out. It's not a huge kickback, but everything helps. Um, cheers, guys. I appreciate you. And I'll catch you on the next one.